Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. This video is an introduction video on a series of videos that I'll be producing uh, very soon, which, as I mentioned in my last videos, it's about getting uh, recording a song from start to finish uh, using the Presonus Studio One DAW version 3 Prime the free downloadable version. So hopefully by now you have watched my previous video and you are able to download and install that free version. So I'll be using that uh, Studio One to record a song. Now we know Studio One Prime um, is free download so it has its limitations and its capabilities. So we'll be using lots of techniques and ideas to uh, overcome some of its limitations and still in the end produce a song that is um, you know professional level so I'll be showing you what equipment that I'll be using how they are actually connected and uh, later on as we start recording each track each instrument into uh, Studio One Prime uh, we're gonna work out the best possible ways to get really good results for our recording now, for this uh, purpose, I will be using my keyboard, the Korg PA3X, uh, that will be producing the sound, um, because I don't actually have a live band to play, and most of my recording is done by myself, all of my arrangement is done on my PA3X uh, uh, from Korg, uh, or a few of the other synthesizers that I have, or sound modules. So if you don't have, you don't really need to have the same keyboard, obviously, uh, for this um, project to work. If you have another sound module or a different keyboard, you'll be using that keyboard to m do your recording. Because I'm trying to uh, show you a way to record live music rather than built-in VST plugin and sound modules. Um, which we we'll later on we might be able to play with them as well and add additional sounds um, but the whole idea is the recording technique uh, of how to capture the audio sound um, whether it's from a microphone or whether it's from the, an instrument and to uh, edit it and uh, confine it with you know EQ and compression and all the other effects that we can apply available in Presonus uh, Studio One Prime and, and then mix it down and then finally try to master it and uh, export it. So we can listen to it um, on our MP3 players or on, my, on our smartphones and on YouTube and, and so on. Now for the purpose of recording, I will be using my Korg PA3X keyboard to produce all the sounds of all the different instruments and then uh, we'll be uh, taking each step at a time, recording each instrument separately. It'll be connected uh, to our trusty old um, common mixer that I've been using for a while. Even though I have great gear, the whole idea of this video is to have a minimal equipment uh, at minimal cost. I'll be using the Behringer's Xenix Q502, um, you know, one microphone and two line input mixer which has a USB connection to my old laptop, really old laptop. Again, the whole purpose is minimal. I'll be using my old laptop, which is quite a few years old. It's a Dell and it's an uh, i5 processor with 8 gigs RAM, um, probably running about uh, 1.8 gig, gigahertz and so on. Um, so it's nothing really powerful, really old uh, computer and then try to do the recording. So uh, if you've got a better one, then all the better. But I'm trying to get this uh, video demonstrated so that uh, be able to use minimal uh, costly equipment to get a really good result. So for these demonstration purposes, I have gone ahead and actually recorded and arranged a song um, on my Korg PA3X and recorded as a MIDI. And then I copied that, I will be copying that MIDI file from my keyboard and loading it onto uh, Studio One. And then Studio One is uh, also connected to my Korg 
using a, a MIDI connection or USB MIDI connection so that when I want each instrument to play, I'll be playing it in Studio One and then my Korg PA3X will be producing the sounds which I have audio cables connected to my uh, Q502 Behringer mixer and Behringer mixer is connected to the laptop as uh, a USB connection so the sound will be converted into digital and then recorded in Studio One Prime. Now the advantage of that rather than me playing the keyboard um, uh, and recording the sound directly um, onto Prime the reason I've done it this way is so that I have control of each instrument. So um, the MIDI notes that um, will be loaded in Studio One Prime, uh, I have control of it. So I'll be able to select each instrument individually. And then as Studio One starts playing, the keyboard will play that one particular instrument and then the only that instrument will sound back uh, so I can record each instrument separately on each track so that I'm not just playing the keyboard and recording as a stereo full signal on to uh, Prime because that defies the whole purpose. We want to be able to have full control of each instrument being played uh, on the keyboard just like if we had a band um, that each uh, band player will play their own instrument and record separately rather than a live situation. So in a recording situation you'll have the drummer play and then we'll have, you know, normally you'll have a couple microphones set up so you can actually uh, record the drummer and then um, as a drummer um, track is being played back, the bass guitarist will play the bass guitar and record the bass track and so on. So. Uh, that's the whole purpose that I'll be simulating so that each instrument is recorded separately on each track so we have 100% control of each instrument. This is my keyboard, the Korg PA3X that uh, I have just recorded an arrangement song with it but it could be any keyboard that you already own that has a MIDI interface. And for this demonstration, uh, any arrangement that I have done, I've actually recorded onto my uh, and saved it onto my USB, which I will show you how I load that MIDI file into Studio One. So the audio outputs from my keyboard come in to my patch bay. This is my patch bay where all of my gear is uh, connected to, um, and then out of the patch bay coming out is connecting it to my uh, Behringer Q502 Xenix USB mixer. Now if you don't have a patch bay, which are great things because all of my gear is connected to the patch bay, that means I can connect any gear, any instrument uh, quite quickly. But if you don't have one of those, that's fine. You connect your audio output from your keyboard directly to the mixer's line in, left and right and then you'll be able to control its volume and the panning from here. And obviously I do have a headphone connected so I can hear what it's being played on the keyboard. Or if you have a sound module, that's the same thing. And then USB connection comes from the mixer into the laptop, which is my Dell laptop running Sony's uh, uh, Studio One Prime. So the analog to digital conversion is done from the mixer to the USB. Oh, by the way, um, I use uh, colored uh, uh, zip tags or uh, strip tags, whatever you like to call them, to indicate my cables, make it really easy to know if I've got multiple USBs connected or audio cables connected, make it really easy to identify them. It's a good idea to if you have tags uh, with writing on them, to indicate that's a good idea as well, especially if you have lots of cables um, like myself. So the next USB cable connected here, this one here, goes to the back of my keyboard where it's a USB to MIDI um, conversion. So MIDI signals from Presonus Studio One will be going um, out to my keyboard. So my keyboard will be playing the sound and 
the sounds will be coming into the mixer and from the mixer through USB back into the keyboard and being recorded with Studio One Prime. Well, I hope now you understand and have an idea of what the setup is like to record the song. Um, so that as you watch progressively the follow-up videos, you have some idea of what the setup looks like. Obviously, each follow-up video, we will be concentrating on each instrument at a time uh, to give you much better inside idea of recording um, instruments. As always, um, if you like uh, your, my videos, please give me the thumbs up. So that way I know that uh, you're enjoying it so that I can follow up with the next videos. And if you have any comments regarding the setup that I have shown you as an introduction video for the series, um, feel free to comment below and I'm more, as always more than happy to answer them uh, for you. And um, if you haven't subscribed, this is a good idea, uh, probably a great time as well to subscribe. That way, as I progressively produce the uh, follow-up videos, you'll be kept up to date. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.